Another day, I gave some attention to climbing. With normal climbing power, 2,639 inches, she indicated 160, which is the best climbing speed. Compared to the trainers I'd flown before, this baby really climbed. At 12,000 feet, I put her in a dive. I'd tried a few before, and this time I wanted to get up to 400. I hadn't trimmed for the dive, and I found that I needed left rudder and some forward stick pressure to follow a straight flight path. At about 7,000 feet, I started to pull out very gradually. It didn't matter so much how fast I was traveling, just so I took it easy in the pullout. In a dive, the greater the speed, the more gradual the pullout has to be. I still had a lot to learn about the airplane, and flying tight turns was a good way to do it. It helps to develop the feeling for the airplane, which is so necessary for combat flying. It's important to be in full control at all times, and so it meant working up to them gradually. As I went along, I reefed them in tighter, and pretty soon was pulling them in almost to the stall point. I was making the turns as tight as I could without stalling out. There was a definite change in the feel of the controls just preceding the stalling condition. I could feel a buffeting on the tail, and the whole airplane shuddered. I got so I could recognize it and was able to prevent a stall by relaxing back pressure. Occasionally, I'd let her stall some, but it was easy enough to recover. The airplane unstalled quickly, and full control returned immediately. The speed didn't matter so much as the tightness of turn. The tighter the turn, the higher the speed at which I stalled out. I practiced tight turns on a number of missions and got to be pretty sure of myself. And probably a little careless. Because during one, I guess I must have pulled her in a little too tight. The airplane stalled and I didn't relax back pressure quick enough and I spun out of the inside of the turn. It caught me unawares and it must have been a couple of turns before I started to recover. She responded promptly. I decided to check up on spins, and this is what my instructor had to say. In this airplane, a spin is an irregular gyration going first slow and then fast in an oscillatory pattern. The first move when you're aware you're in a spin is to close the throttle and go into low RPM. As soon as the direction of rotation is established, bring the stick full back, apply full rudder with the spin, and hold until ready to recover. When the airplane comes to the slow part of its gyration, apply hard opposite rudder. A moment later, move the stick full forward and apply ailerons against the spin. As soon as the rotation stops, usually about three quarters of a turn, it'll begin to recover in a steep dive. Neutralize all controls and wait until the airplane picks up speed and feels normal. Then gradually start to pull up and recovery is completed. In the P-39, as in most airplanes, a spin is easily and quickly recovered from if not permitted to progress too far. I was familiar with the feel of the basic maneuvers and could coordinate each of them pretty well. Next, it was a matter of combining, and the Lazy Eight was a good way to do it. It's a valuable maneuver for developing coordination since it involves motion about all three axes of the airplane at the same time and through a wide range of speeds. I started them from cruising, pulling up in a bank not more than 70 degrees at the steepest point, with a minimum airspeed of 160 at the top of the arc and not exceeding 300 at the center of the eight. When I could do a good job of these, I felt I was well on my way to mastering the airplane. Next came the two-plane element flying with my instructor. We talked it over first on the ground and checked on signals. We took off individually and got into formation in a gentle turn. In loose formation, we climbed to a safe altitude. At 10,000 feet, I trimmed out the ship and pulled up into formation on signal. Keeping it fairly loose, we tried some gentle turns. I was flying on the inside and found that at first I had a tendency to over control. But brushing up on the old fundamentals of position, distance, and smooth throttle coordination, it wasn't long before I could do a fairly decent job of following around in a turn. 
Actually, with the additional power and increased speed range of the airplane, I found it was easier to fly good formation in the P-39 than in the training airplanes I'd flown before. Then we tried some climbs. It was good practice for coordinating my speed and throttle settings with the leaders. And then some dives. Pretty gentle at first, and then steeper. I was becoming accustomed to flying formation at higher speeds and in sharper maneuvers. With several two-plane missions behind me, I felt pretty much at home in formation. I hadn't done much in the way of acrobatics in the airplane and felt about ready for it. Double-checking my shoulder harness lock, I tried some rolls. Starting at cruising, it rolled very easily and had a good response to the ailerons. The stick pressures generally were much lighter than I'd been accustomed to, and she responded quickly and smoothly. Although a pretty easy maneuver, it sure built up my confidence. Then came loops. During this maneuver, the airplane flies through two speed extremes, high at the beginning and end, and low at the top. Trimmed for cruising, I applied left rudder as I pulled up. As the speed decreased, I relaxed rudder pressure. As the airplane continued up, I applied right rudder. On the downward arc, as the speed increased beyond cruising, I relaxed right and gradually applied left rudder. Straight back on the stick fairly hard so as to maintain sufficient speed to carry me through at the top. Nearing the inverted position, I relaxed back pressure slightly and stretched my neck backward as far as possible to see the horizon when it appeared. I could use it as a reference in keeping my wings level. Then on down and around. After more acrobatic practice, I felt I could handle the airplane in all attitudes and was confident in trying my hand at more advanced maneuvers. Something my instructor said helped. With proper instruction, you should feel no apprehension about attempting almost any maneuver. And you'll find that very often fear of the unknown is removed by deliberately doing what you're afraid will happen. All my training thus far had pointed toward one thing. And now I was ready for it gunnery. These planes are built around their armament and are equipped to deliver a lot of firepower. First, I tried my hand at ground targets. With fixed guns aimed to fire along the axis of the airplane, I knew the projectile would strike the target only if I were flying a straight, true course. It meant having the ball in the center. With the ship in a skid, there was a horizontal component, and I hit to one side of the target. And the speed I was traveling at was important, too. Below the recommended speed, the airplane was inclined above the flight path. At higher speeds, it was inclined below the flight path, introducing a vertical component. I started at two or 3,000 feet in a steep dive and flattened out to make an approach at 15 to 25 degrees to the horizon. I found I could come down pretty close and still not have to pull out steeply or abruptly. Next came water targets. And here I had to be even more careful in my pullouts. I didn't hit very much at first, but I was told not to be too concerned. Accurate judgment of speed and timing in pullouts can only be attained with many practice runs. Since this airplane has proved an effective weapon for attacking ground objectives, my training included low-altitude flying and simulated strafing. Then came deflection gunnery practice on aerial targets, making dry passes at another ship. I started with a small amount of deflection, turning to keep lead on the target. Gradually, I increased the speed and narrowed the angle. And it soon became evident that my practice in tight turns was time well spent. Just lately, I've been practicing with live ammunition on a towed sleeve. Which brings me pretty well up to date. As a matter of fact, I'm due for a mission right now. So long, fellas. See you around. Thanks, Chuck. 
You men going into training in this airplane will probably cover much the same ground, perhaps in much the same way. You'll be flying an airplane which is fast and powerful. It is sensitive to the controls and quick to respond. Know thoroughly its characteristics. And when you join the men now in combat, your job will be easy. And like theirs, well done. 